So the difference between cell equilibrium potential, EEQ, and actual cell potential, E cell, we said is due to cell internal resistance. Cell internal resistance, RINT, representing cell internal resistance. We said, okay, as long as that's current passing through the cell quite often, there will be difference between the equilibrium cell potential and the actual cell potential. And for simplicity, if we are using absolute value, if we are using absolute value for cell current or current density, then as we said before, for a galvanic cell or GC, this difference in potential between equilibrium cell potential and actual cell potential would be current times total cell internal resistance. This voltage difference or voltage loss, the difference between equilibrium cell potential and the actual would be equal to current times total cell internal resistance. And if we break it down, we can write it as this total voltage difference or voltage job or voltage loss would be mu electrodes plus current times R ohm, ohmic resistance. We will explain these two terms. I, R, I for current, R for resistance, but ohm for ohmic resistance. I, R, ohm just means the voltage loss. Voltage, remember, for ohm law is current times resistance. Voltage loss, but due to ohmic resistance. Ohmic resistance. That is just uh, the typical linear resistance, mostly coming from the electrolyte. That is coming from how when as charge moves through the electrolyte, there will be resistance, and the, the related voltage job would be just current times the total ohmic resistance, and it's strictly linear. Then another term for this voltage loss would be called mu electrodes. This would be the voltage loss, or sometimes we say over potential. Over potential, you can also just call it a voltage loss, but due to subscript electrodes, due to electrode processes. Electrode processes. I use plural because there are multiple electrodes, at least the two electrodes, one anode, one cathode, and on each electrode, there are multiple processes, which we'll discuss in greater detail. But anyway, this equation gives us the difference between equilibrium cell potential and the actual observed cell potential would be related to current by total internal resistance. And if we expand it further, it will be current times ohmic resistance. That gives us the voltage loss due to ohmic resistance, strictly linear and mostly in the electrolyte plus another term which we call over potential for electrode process or voltage loss re associated with electrode reaction processes and as we can see in this case current greater than zero internal resistance greater than zero which means the cell potential would always be smaller than equilibrium uh, cell potential. What this means is there will be less energy converted to electrical, external electrical work. The E cell, the electrical potential times Q, remember work, electrical work is potential times total charge. E cell times Q, this would be smaller than the predicted from equilibrium potential, EEQ times Q. Again, Q for the total charge uh, going through the electrochemical cell. So the work, electrical work would be lower than what is possible under equilibrium condition, EEQ times charge. Okay. On the other hand, if we are talking about electrolytic cell, EC, then the potential difference, 
still between actual cell potential, which is also the potential that you applied, and the equilibrium potential. Actual potential and equilibrium potential. In this case, electrolytic cell, the actual potential you applied would be higher than the equilibrium, and the difference would be still current times internal resistance. And if we expand it further, would be current times ohmic resistance. Similarly, ohmic resistance, strictly linear current times ohmic resistance plus a mu electrode. And the mu electrode is still the voltage loss or over potential due to electrode processes. And in electrolytic cell current, let's in this case assuming still take absolute value, then the applied voltage of the cell potential would be greater than equilibrium cell potential. And what this means is electrical energy provided, electrical chemical and electrical energy provided, the applied Q would be higher than what is actually stored, which is EEQ, equilibrium cell potential times the total charge. Again, remember from physics, electrical work can be voltage times the total charge uh, transported. Okay. And about this mu electrodes, which we call voltage loss or over potential for electrode processes, it can be from both the anode and the cathode because an electrochemical cell always contain at least two electrodes. One is anode, where the oxidation half cell reaction occur. The other would be cathode, where the reduction half cell reaction would occur. And both anode and cathode processes, the voltage loss would contribute to this mu electrodes, or voltage loss, or over potential associated with the different electrode processes. And this is what we just said. Electrodes can be separated into the anode over potential and the cathode over potential. And another note is that the internal cell resistance, RINT, as well as the mu electrodes, both are often nonlinear non-linear, which means R and T may not be a constant, while the mu also may not have a linear dependence on the current. Okay. The other one, the third node would be over potential for an individual electrode cannot for this electrochemical cell cannot be separated uh, without adding a third electrode, or sometimes people say reference electrode, okay? Because the numerical potential is always across two electrodes. And uh, if you want to pinpoint the exact over potential, the voltage loss for an individual electrode reaction, I want to emphasize electrode that's always the redox reaction or half cell reaction accompanied with it. The over potential for that electrode re half cell reaction, it cannot be separated if you do not use a third electrode, or that third electrode sometimes is also called reference electrode. And we'll talk about this last point in greater detail later part of this class.